Hi everyone, welcome back to the Grow Paradise Garden and Nursery. As you can see, I had to come out here with a horticultural fleece last night because we did have a risk of frost forecast, even though I'm on the south coast of the UK. Now we got lucky. We didn't actually get a frost. It only dropped to about three or two degrees Celsius, which is absolutely fine. But throughout spring, I always keep some fleece at hand just so that I can protect any tender plants if I need to. Now the garden is really coming alive. And in this video, which is quite on topic with the frost forecast that we had, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite hardy or half hardy tropical style plants that you can add to your garden. Because at this time of year, we're all looking to add some tropical style plants, but we're a bit wary of cold weather, um, frosts, and kind of the need for extra space over winter. So I'm gonna share a few of my favorite plants that are super easy to look after, and they'll come back bigger and better every year. So the first plant I'm gonna to add to this list is Fatsia. And there are so many different forms available and it's completely hardy throughout most of the UK. Now, some of the forms are slightly um, less hardy, but they will recover in spring. You might lose some of the foliage in the cold weather of winter. But this one's one of my favorites. This is Fatsia japonica variegata. So it has these big glossy green palmate leaves, but they've got really chunky variegated markings, usually around the leaf edges. And it's a good plant for brightening up the shady spots in a tropical style garden because that creamy white variegation just glows in a shady area and Fatsias are renowned for being really shade resilient. Now this is one type. I actually bought this as a garden centre rescue plant and it's quickly become a multi-stemmed shrub and these leaves freeze solid and I'm always worried there's going to be a risk of frost burn on this lovely foliage but it always thaws out and recovers really really well and we've got knuckles of new foliage emerging everywhere at this time of year so it's going to look fantastic throughout the year all through winter. Now there's another Fatsia form that comes from Taiwan that I really really love. I've shared it on the channel before but it's got to be included in this list. Let me show you. This is that Taiwanese Fatsia. Now this is Fatsia polycarpa, so it's a different species to the Japonica that we've just seen. And this is actually a cultivar. This one's called Green Fingers because it's got these really pronounced finger-like deep lobes on each leaf. And I think that this shape gives it a really, really tropical look and it's evergreen. So you're gonna get to enjoy this really tropical foliage all year round. Now, I think this is my favorite of the Fatsia species. And I've noticed growing it in the Grow Paradise nursery and garden that it actually tolerates quite a bit more shade than most Fatsias. Many Fatsia are kind of, they look best when you grow them in shade. If you grow them in full sun, the leaves tend to shrink a bit and they can curl up and get a bit of sunburn. But I think where this one has less surface area, it actually tolerates full sun really, really well. I've grown it in full sun and partial shade and it does well in both. Now I'm actually adding two or three more of these to the garden. And if you've subscribed to the channel, you know how small the Grow Paradise tropical style garden is. So to be able to earn a space where you get multiple spots in this garden is kind of a good badge of honor. I love it that much. And it's pushing out new foliage now. So again, you get that lovely unfurling foliage coming out from such a tough, resilient tropical style shrub. I think of all of the Fatsias that are available, Fatsia polycarpa, Fatsia japonica variegata are my favorite too. And just behind me here is a tree that I know I talk about a lot on the Grow Paradise YouTube channel, but it really is worth giving a go if you can source it. It's a loquat tree. It actually produces an edible fruit called loquat, an orange fruit. And those fruits would be forming about now if it had flowered through winter, but mine didn't flower. But that's not the key reason I grow it. This loquat tree I love because these enormous, thick, corrugated leaves are evergreen. Now, this tree has survived minus five and a little bit lower in the Grow Paradise nursery and garden. And it's provided this lush, exotic canopy to the back of the garden all year round. And it really is a plant that you can sort of manage to keep it the size that you want. I actually did a video demonstrating on this, how to prune trees and how to keep them to the size that you need them in your garden. And for a tropical style garden that you want low maintenance, easy tropical looking foliage, then try a loquat tree. Its Latin name is Ariobatria japonica. And it's just really, really easy. I'd say the only thing that you have to stay on top of is pruning because they can get quite big if you don't cut them back once a year. 
This is about the size that I'm going to try and keep mine now. It's just a little bit higher that it's softening the boundary fences in the garden, but not so high that it's blocking out sunlight for me or anyone around me. Definitely, definitely one that's worth a go. And I really like as the new foliage emerges from late winter into spring, it starts off a silvery color and then slowly matures to this deep green of the older leaves. So you really do get year round interest. So just beside that loquat tree, is my Musa Basju banana, which at this time of year in mid spring is just pushing out its new leaves, having grown and survived unprotected in my UK tropical style garden all winter long. Now to show you what the leaves would look like, I can show you a younger plant here. This is a smaller Musa Basju. This is the Japanese hardy banana that originates from high altitudes. So plants that originate from high altitude mountainous regions have evolved to tolerate colder conditions, high winds and some of that tougher weather that's very, very close to what the British climate and climate across the UK really can throw at these plants. Now, I'm in the south coast, so I don't have to protect my Musabasju bananas. This pseudo stem survives all winter long. Maybe I lose the top foot or two, but I will just cut that back and allow this new leaf to push up out. And in two or three weeks time, this area behind me will be full of enormous banana leaves and Musa Basju is the species you want to look for. If you're looking for a low maintenance banana plant to grow in the UK, that really you don't need to protect too much. If you get really severe winters, let's say below minus five for long periods of time, then a wrap in horticultural fleece, like I've done with some of the plants in the nursery, will be absolutely fine. And you will get height, you'll get big tropical leaves, and it's one of these plants that keeps giving. They actually send up what's called pups from the base. So you get multiple plants growing in a clump of bananas. Um, people don't realize how easy they are to grow because they look so impressive, but it's definitely one to try if you're looking for that tropical style. You're in the UK and you get slightly colder winters, try Musa Basju. Now, one of the key things to remember when you're creating a tropical style garden is that not all of the plants need to be tough evergreen shrubs trees or something as impressive and as tall as a banana plant. The secret to creating a tropical style garden is to fill in every single gap that you've got. So all those difficult gaps between and underneath large trees and shrubs, if that's all full of lush foliage, then you're going to get that jungle look and it's going to make you feel like you're in some far flung location every time you step out the back door. Now in this narrow border that flanks our garden path for some of the plants that I like to use to do that, and the ones I'm going to point out to you now are hardy for me in USDA gardening zone 9 or 9b. So that means I get about minus 5 degrees Celsius. And these plants survive and they come back every year. So the first one is a fern. And it looks a lot like the maiden's hair fern that we grow as houseplants. And it's actually a relative of it. It's called the hardy maiden's hair fern. This is Adiantum venustum. And for me, this has remained semi-evergreen. So what do I mean by semi-evergreen? Some of that lovely, delicate foliage has stayed up all winter and some of it got slightly frosted back. But the plant as a whole survived, which is the key thing here. If it survives and it recovers quickly in spring, it's earned a spot in the Grow Paradise tropical style garden. Behind that is a hardy begonia. This is Begonia evansiana, and this is the subspecies Alba, meaning it's got white flowers. This is great. This will grow up to about 60 centimeters tall. It's got these thick, fleshy green leaves with a red underside. And in mid to late summer, it produces sprays of white flowers that just dance in this narrow border. It's a really, really great addition. And not many people grow hardy begonias, and you really, really should. They look very, very tropical. Um, they tolerate shade. Um, but the fact that they can grow around the base of trees and trees suck up a lot of moisture says a lot about them. It means that they can survive in these difficult positions. Now, the great thing about this is it actually forms little bulbils along the stems that drop to the ground throughout the season. And that is all gonna regrow and reshoot in spring, which means that the clumps gonna become bigger and better every single year. Now, a plant that's just behind that is my Brunera macrophylla. This is a cultivar called Sea Heart. But you can also get one called um, Alexander's Great. These are really, really, really hardy. They are drought resilient. They've got these large heart-shaped leaves with a silver mottled marking over the top, and they look great in a tropical border because that silvery foliage just kind of stands out against all the lush greens of a tropical style garden. It's definitely one that's worth trying. You can source them quite readily. Um, and that's what it's all about for me. If you're looking to create a tropical style, that's low maintenance. 
What you need to do is look for plants that regular garden centers would sell, but they have that tropical look. They have that big foliage, the architectural flowers, and um, things like this fern that's pushing up new foliage here. This is Polystichum munitum. It's evergreen. It's readily available, but it looks fantastic at the back of this tropical style border, creating this kind of rainforest vibe with evergreen ferny foliage throughout the winter months. So we've covered some tropical style trees, some tropical style shrubs, and some tropical style plants that you can grow to fill in the gaps between the bigger plants. So let's have a look at my favorite hardy climber for a tropical style garden, and that's this. This is Trachylispermum jasminoides, or the star jasmine. Now this is evergreen, which is great. When I'm looking to create a tropical style garden, I love to find evergreen plants because I don't want it to look bare in winter. I want it to look just as good as it does in summer, or at least as close to the summer look as I can get it. This plant remains evergreen. It's quite woody, so it's quite firm and rigid. And in winter, the leaves will actually flush a bright red color if it gets cold stress, and then they'll turn back to green as the weather conditions kind of warm in spring, which is great. It gives you a bit of winter interest. Now at this time of year, there are new shoots growing everywhere. And this plant really comes into its own in summer. It is covered in tiny white flowers that are very, very highly scented. And we've got this growing up an obelisk here where we sit outside on the patio because the whole patio area is just full of that jasmine fragrance. And it really is just really, really enjoyable. Um, fragrance is something that not many people will consider actively when they're creating a tropical style garden, but there are so many highly fragrant plants that you can add, and it just adds a whole other dimension to your tropical style garden. It isn't just about how it looks. If you can come out and treat yourself in all of the senses, it's gonna be a much better experience for everyone that visits it. So we're making a tropical style garden that looks good, a tropical style garden that smells good. Just add some plants for sound, like bamboos that are gonna rustle in the wind. Maybe add a little water feature and you're adding the sound element as well. But yeah, the star jasmine, is one of my favorite climbers to add into a tropical style garden. Now it needs a sunny spot to perform best. And the good thing about these plants is they will grow happily and healthily in a large pot for many, many, many years. This has been in this pot for probably four or five years now, and it doubles in size every single year. So even if you're tight on space or if you're in a balcony and you're looking to create a tropical style, this is a plant to try. Now you might have noticed that I haven't covered any palm trees in this video, which might be a bit of a surprise considering I'm talking about creating a tropical style. And that's because I've recently done a collaboration video with Abbott's Resub Tropical Gardens, where we went into deep details about all of the palm trees that you can grow in a tropical style garden that gets colder winters. And we covered some reliably hardy ones, some rare palms that are actually doing quite well in a climate very similar to my garden here. So I'll put a link to that video and you can go and check that out for a full detail of palm trees. But just to touch on it, this is a young Trachycarpus fortunii, or the windmill palm. And this is one of the best palms that you can grow in a UK tropical style garden or a tropical style garden that gets colder winters. I say best, one of the hardiest that you can grow. It will form a really straight trunk. It will grow up to quite good heights. Um, they're relatively slow growing in the first few years, but once they become established, they gain height relatively quickly and they get a really nice fibrous, hairy looking trunk that looks very, very tropical in my opinion. So that's one to give a go. I could talk for hours listing hundreds of plants that you can add to create a tropical style garden in the UK, but this is just a short list of plants that are relatively easy to find in garden centers and online shops that you can add to create a tropical vibe if you're on a balcony, you've got a courtyard garden, or you've got more space to play with. Now, if you found the video useful, hit subscribe. It's the easiest way to support our channel. And don't forget, we've got a global support forum at growparadise.social. It's completely free to sign up. And there is a community of hundreds of growers around the world there. And we're all helping each other grow this style of garden and some of these weird and wonderful plants. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.